Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about the new Ford Bronco and specifically we're going to be talking about its crawler gear. So if you look at the manual gear selector you'll see a little C on it. So what is that C for? Now, the Bronco is not the first vehicle to use a crawler gear, but it is new and it's exciting, so we're gonna talk about it. The second thing I wanna talk about in this video, and sorry to the Tesla fanatics out there, this one's gonna hurt a little bit, but the second thing I wanna talk about is wheel torque, because several of the electric car manufacturers out there seem to be wanting to change the conversation when talking about electric cars instead of motor torque to wheel torque, and I think that's dumb, and I'll explain why in this video. So what is a crawler gear? Well, you can think of it like a first gear except it has an even higher gear ratio. So for example with the Ford Bronco the crawler gears ratio is 6.588 to 1 whereas first gears ratio is 4.283 to 1. This means when you're using that crawler gear you have more wheel torque but a lower top speed in that gear. So let's say you have a manual transmission Ford Bronco. Well from the engine you send that torque to the transmission and so if you're in this crawler gear well the engine speed is going to be 6 0.588 times greater than that output gear speed. So you go through first the transmission where you're in the crawler gear, next you move to the transfer case, and if you're in low using the highest gear ratio transfer case Ford offers with the new Bronco, there's two different transfer cases, then that multiplies it once again by 3.06 to 1. That's if you're in low gear. And then from there, it moves to the rear differential. And depending on which model you pick, there are quite a few different differential options, but the most aggressive for the manual transmission puts you at a 4.7 to one gear ratio final drive for that rear differential. So what's happening is your engine speed is being reduced every step of the way by the time it gets to the wheels. So to figure out how much faster your engine speed versus your wheel speed is, you simply multiply these numbers across. So 6.588 times 3.06 times 4.7, and that gives you 95, actually 94.75 if you wanna get a little bit more accurate. But what that means is for every 95 rotations of that engine, your wheel rotates once. So for every rotation of your wheel, your engine is rotating 95 times. Now this number is crazy high. So to give you context, let's analyze first gear and sixth gear in a transmission like this. However, in four high rather than four low, meaning we just have a one to one gear ratio in our transfer case. So first gear's ratio 4.283, we're multiplying that through the transfer case, just a one to one ratio. And then it's still going through that same differential. You multiply that across, First gear is typically going to be around, you know, 20 times that that engine will rotate and then the tire will rotate once. Sixth gear, which is a ratio of 0.646, you're only getting three engine rotations for every wheel rotation. So that's of course useful when you're on the highway and traveling at much greater speeds. Now, one of the advantages of a crawler gear, though not necessarily the main reason for it, is that you get increased wheel torque. So let's look at a quick example to understand why this happens. So here we have our four cylinder engine and it is sending that torque to the transmission. And here we have a two to one gear ratio. And so for every two rotations here, we get one rotation here. Now torque is a force multiplied by a distance. So we're getting that torque from the engine and this gear here has a distance, its radius, and then a force that it's applying to the other gear. So that force times this radius is our engine torque. Now, because this gear right here has a larger radius, we have leverage there. So we're increasing the wheel torque. We're now multiplying that force by two times the distance. So our output is actually two times the torque. What we've lost is speed. So we've cut our speed in half, but we've doubled our torque. So that's the advantage of doing so. We reduce speed and we double our torque. So how does this apply to the Ford Bronco? Well, we can go back to our crawl ratio of 95, 94.75, that's our crawl ratio, and then we're multiplying that by our engine torque to find out what our wheel torque is. Our engine torque is 310 pound-feet. There are two engine options for the Ford Bronco, a 2.3 liter inline four-cylinder or a 2.7 liter V6. Uh, the 2.3 liter is the only one that comes with the manual transmission. You get 270 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. So you multiply that 310 by 94.75, and that gives you a wheel torque of 29,372 pound-feet of torque. And for the metric folks out there, this is about 40,000 newton meters. Of course, it looks way cleaner in metric. 
All right, Tesla fans, are we ready? So what's so significant about this 40,000 Newton meter number? Well, perhaps you remember during the Tesla Roadster presentation, they got all excited about having 10,000 Newton meters of wheel torque. Well, 10,000 sounds pretty pitiful in comparison to 40,000 Newton meters. So does this mean the Ford Bronco is gonna be way faster than the Tesla Roadster? No, absolutely not. What it illustrates is why using wheel torque as some form of acceleration or indicator of performance is a silly thing to do because you can manipulate these numbers and it doesn't tell you that the car is gonna be quick or slow. But if you say something has a thousand horsepower and something has 270 horsepower, it's gonna be pretty clear which one of those is going to have a greater top speed and accelerate quicker. In summary, as far as specifications go, we should use engine or motor power and engine or motor torque. Now, what I haven't mentioned is that this 40,000 Newton meter figure assumes that Ford actually allows for peak engine torque in the crawler gear. And I would imagine they wouldn't allow that. It would be logical for them not to. So here's why. What is our force that our tires are actually applying to the ground? So in order to figure this out, we're going to model our entire Ford Bronco as one tire on the ground, all of the weight on this one tire and all of the torque going to this one tire. So we know that torque is a force multiplied by a radius. So the tire's applying a force to the ground, that's multiplied by this radius. That's what our torque uh, ends up being. So we can rearrange this equation to figure out what is the force at the ground, torque divided by radius. So we know what our wheel torque is, 29,000 pound feet. And then we simply divide that by our radius. In this case, uh, the variant we are using for this example has 33 inch diameter tires. So we take that 33, we divide it by two, that's our radius. And then we divide that by 12 to get it in feet instead of inches. And finally, we divide that across. And what do we get? We get 21,000 pounds of force. So that's an insanely high uh, force that we're applying to the ground. Can we even use it? Well, the maximum force we could actually use at the ground is equal to the frictional coefficient of our tire multiplied by the normal force on it. Now, if you look at the different curb weights of the Ford Bronco out there, it ranges from about 4,300 pounds to 5,000 pounds for the manual transmission. Let's just use the heaviest one and say we have a 5,000 pound vehicle. Let's say our tires have a frictional coefficient of one. For uh, all-terrain tires, it could be lower than that, but let's just say it's one. So we multiply one by 5,000, we get 5,000 pound force. What does that mean? That means the maximum force this vehicle can actually apply to the ground before those tires start spinning is 5,000 pounds of force. And yet it has available at the wheels 21,000 pounds of force. And so obviously there's no need for all of that engine torque. You don't need it because of the gear ratio multiplication. So very likely you would simply limit uh, the engine torque when using this crawler gear and using the transfer case low speed ratio. So if your crawler gear isn't about wheel torque, what is it about? Well, it's about very fine control of low vehicle speed. So in the off-road world, often going over certain obstacles requires very slow vehicle speeds and technical maneuvers. And so in doing so, it's really important that you have proper control of your vehicle speed. And with a manual transmission, having really low vehicle speeds often means that you have to slip the clutch because in order to let that clutch out fully, you might have to be at say five or six miles per hour in first gear. So using these crawler gears, you can decrease the speed at which you can fully let out that clutch and thus you have more control over these low speed scenarios. It's important to reduce the amount of time you're actually slipping that clutch so you don't overheat the clutch and cause too much wear of it. All right, let's look at a quick example and say we're in our little Bronco, we're going along at a thousand RPM, we've completely let out the clutch in our crawler gear and so we don't have any clutch wear but we're trying to figure out how fast is our little Bronco moving along the ground and you know I gotta say in the past nine years I feel like my drawings have at least minorly improved so that actually looks almost like a Bronco there but anyways we're puttering along we don't have to worry about clutch wear how fast are we actually moving if our engine is at a thousand rpm so of course the first thing we're going to do is figure out what is our wheel rpm and we do that by dividing by our crawl ratio and so we get a divided by 94.75 we get 10.55 
as our wheel RPM. Now we need to figure out how far do we move with one rotation of the tire. So we have a 33 inch tire. We multiply that by pi to get its circumference. So the total distance a tire will travel in one full rotation will be about 103.6 inches. So we're multiplying our wheel RPM by the distance of one rotation and we get a total distance of 1,093 inches per minute that we are traveling, that's our speed. We're simply multiplying wheel RPM by the inches per wheel rotation. And we have our speed in inches per minute, a very confusing uh, unit to analyze. So we'll take inches per minute, we'll multiply it by 60 minutes in an hour, we'll divide that by 12 inches in a foot, we'll divide that by 5,280 feet in a mile, and this gives us one, amazing. What's amazing about this is that at 1,000 RPM, our speed is one mile per hour. So basically, and it's, it's very close, it's like 1.03, something like that. But basically what this means is for every thousand RPM that your engine is at in this crawler gear using the low speed transfer case, what we have is one mile per hour. So at 2000 RPM, you're at about two miles per hour. At 6000 RPM, you're at about six miles per hour. So this means you can have a very fine control of your speed and you don't have to travel crazy fast over wild obstacles, unlike what you're seeing Ford do in this, you know, PR footage here, which is of course meant to show off how cool it is uh, and not actually, you know, you probably don't want to go this fast the first time through a section or you're going to end up eventually with some bigger problems. But what we need to look at here is for our crawler gear, what is the total speed range in that crawler gear using the low speed ratio of the transfer case? Well, we're then looking at about one to six, maybe seven miles per hour, depending on the engine's RPM limit. The Mustang has a 2.3 liter, similar to this engine, which has a red line at 6,500 RPM. So I would imagine somewhere around seven miles per hour is your top speed for this crawler gear using low. And then when you're in four high in first gear, your speed range is five to 32 miles per hour. So for example, let's say you're off road and you wanna fully release the clutch, but you only wanna travel one mile per hour. Well, you can't do that in first gear because your engine would be at something like 200 RPM. So it forces you to slip that clutch versus using this crawler gear, you can be at 1,000 RPM, one mile per hour, and just crawl right along, your engine's happy, it's not doing all that much work, your vehicle's happy, it's got all that great torque multiplication, and you're happy because you don't have to burn up your clutch. It's a win, 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 win. So there are great reasons for crawl ratios, especially in the off-roading world where you want very fine low speed control. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.